What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Kicker Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now in today's video, I'm actually going to be showing you some things that may be disturbing to you, but I do want to give you a disclaimer. I've edited out all the blood, all the gore, all the things that YouTube says I can't put up here, but I do think that this video is going to be very educational and very important to you, especially as new divers or if, say, you are getting into even free diving. Free diving is when you take a breath, you go under, you hold that breath, and you come back up. We know that that is a no-no in scuba diving. We never hold our breath for any reason. Well, in this particular case, you're going to watch a free diver who went down while holding his breath. He ascended up into what's called an air bell or a trapped pocket of air, and he was breathing that trapped pocket of air underwater. And then, of course, he made his ascent while holding his breath, and, of course, an air embolism or a pneumothorax, in short, a popped lung actually occurred. Now, I do want to give you some quick background of the location and how this incident occurred and just how fortunate we were to actually get it on camera, although it was an unfortunate situation for him. So, in short, my family and a good... Uh, Good set of friends of mine. We were down at Vortex Springs. We were doing some springs diving. We went down in the caves area. And then as we came back up, we noticed that there was a bunch of free divers swimming down and going up into the air bell. And if you're not familiar with what an air bell is, basically it's just a trapped pocket of air. And there's plenty of them that you can actually swim up into and talk to your buddies. A really good famous one is the one at Blue Grotto where you can swim down in. You can actually pull your regulator out and breathe because there's fresh air being pumped into it. You can talk to your buddy, and then, of course, you put your regulator back in to send back into the water column and continue your dive. Well, the one at Vortex Springs is a little bit different. It's still just a trapped um, layer of air, if you will, but there's no fresh air being pumped into it, so it's pure CO2 when you're up in there. So what we encourage you to do is if you're going to go up in the air bell, pull your reg out, talk to your buddy, put your reg back in anytime you need to take a breath, then pull your reg back out and continue to talk to your buddy. Then when you're ready to exit, put your reg back in, take a breath, and make your exit. Well, in this particular case, that's exactly what a free diver done. He went down inside the air bell. He sat there for about a minute. He was breathing this compressed gas, which in this case was pure CO2. And then he decided he wanted to make his ascent. So when he left the air bell, he held his breath all the way to the surface. Now, depending on the water level at the time, this air bell is anywhere, say, between 22 and 25 foot deep. So it's it's right there at that two atmosphere mark, that 33 foot mark, close enough to say that his lungs was about two times the size they were once he hit the surface. So I want you to pay close attention to this video. I do apologize if you find it very disturbing, but once again, I think it's a very educational video for you, and hopefully, not only will you learn from it, it'll keep you safe as well. So like I stated earlier, guys, this is a free diver. He's went down into the air bell here at Vortex Springs, and he's just going to chill out for a little bit, and he's going to breathe. The biggest difference between free diving and scuba diving, free diving, you're taking a breath at the surface, you're holding it, going down, and coming back up. In scuba diving, obviously, we're breathing underwater, so we're breathing compressed gas under more than 1.0 atmospheres, which in this case is what he's doing. As he comes out, you're going to see that he does not exhale all the way up, and it's about 22 to 25 feet, depending on the water level at any given time. And right when he hit the surface, you saw him kind of double over. You saw him grab his mouth. That's when the uh, embolism or the pneumothorax actually occurred. And we're going to slow it down and zoom in for you here. I want you to see he is not exhaling on the way up. Normally, a free diver wouldn't have to, but since he tried to take a breath down there in the air bell, in this particular case, he needed to exhale. Now, you are going to see just a few bubbles come out. That's actually the air that's trapped in his mask coming out on the way up uh, because as pressure decreases, volume is going to expand. So that's, that's his air in his mask expanding, which you can see right there. But as he comes up, you're going to notice he is holding his breath the whole time. And right when he hits the surface, you're going to see he grabs his mouth because that's when the pneumothorax happens. That's when that bloody froth is coming out. And he has, actually grabs his chest as well when he starts to double over. And then, of course, it just lights out. So I think I got it on here twice for you. But as he comes up, right there, you can see when he exerted out, that was the last remaining air in his lungs coming out. And you can see a little bit of blood there. But he's also grabbing his chest and he's doubling over in pain because that's where he actually ruptured a lung or he developed that pneumothorax. And we're going to look at it one more time here. You can watch him. He'll grab his chest, he'll hit the surface, and then it's lights out. Now, the aftermath of this, in my opinion, is a little bit more troublesome than just the pneumothorax itself. 
And I'm going to talk about that here briefly, but I want you guys to kind of get a quick review on how Boyle's Law works. So we're going to watch a quick review from SSI just to understand how pressure and volume works, and then I'll kind of talk about the aftermath as well of what actually happened to this free diver after he got out of the water. In section one, we discussed Boyle's Law in terms of increasing pressure to describe squeeze and how injuries can occur on descent. As a reminder, Boyle's Law states as pressure increases, volume decreases. As pressure decreases, volume increases. Now, we are going to discuss how Boyle's Law works in the opposite direction. If an untrained scuba diver were to dive to just 10 meters or 33 feet deep at two bar or atmospheres, fill the lungs with about five liters or 10 pints of air and ascend to the surface at one bar or atmosphere without exhaling, the air in the lungs would expand to fill a volume of 10 liters or 20 pints or two times the normal lung volume. As you can imagine, this is impossible and their lungs would be damaged. So once again, pressure and volume is something that we do not want to mess around or play around with. And we need to understand that the golden rule in scuba is never hold your breath. Yes, he was free diving. He didn't have scuba equipment. But by him going up into that air bell and taking a breath, he is breathing compressed gas at more than 1.0 atmospheres. Theoretically speaking, he is scuba diving at that point. Thus, on the way up, he should not have held his breath. Now let's talk about the aftermath and what actually happened to him versus what should have happened to him when he got out of the water. One of the things I do know is his buddy did have to drag him or do a, a tired diver toe, if you will, over to the edge of the water where the stairs are, and he did have to help him out. Now, unfortunately, myself and my dive buddy could not get out of the water to assist with him because we did have a, uh, a stop, an obligated stop that we had to make because we had been down so deep for so long. But after we got out of the water, I'm going to say the grand total time elapsing of, of the incident occurring to the time we got out of the water was an additional, say, 15 minutes. And then it probably took us 20 minutes to gear down. Of course, by the time we're out of the water, he's nowhere to be found. Um, then we got changed. We got our gear loaded up in, our, in my pickup truck and got everything loaded up. And then when we went inside the building to pay the bill, it had been an additional 30 minutes. So now we're pushing on about a solid hour from the time he got out of the water to the time we actually saw him again. Now when we did go in to pay our bill, we found him sitting at a chair right inside the store there and he was doubled over in pain. They had him a trash can that he could spit blood into and he was spitting up quite a bit of blood. But what was really troubling is nobody had him on oxygen. Thankfully they did dial 911, but nobody had him on oxygen and he uh, severely needed oxygen very badly. So when I went to go grab oxygen for him, thankfully EMS was pulling in right at that time point. But let's think about that time frame again. It was nearly an hour from the time he exited the water to the time EMS got to him and he got oxygen. And that is simply not called for. He should have had oxygen immediately when he got out of the water. Now, whether he was a trained free diver or a trained scuba diver or just someone pretending to be a free diver, I don't know. I didn't actually get to ask those questions to him. I did get to treat him in between the time I saw him in the store and EMS actually got there. But that was like a matter of a minute or two. So when as soon as I did an assessment of him, and went to go grab oxygen. EMS was pulling in, so I didn't really have time to do that. I relayed the information that I had to EMS, and of course, they were able to administer oxygen to him, get him back to the ambulance, and get him proper treatment. Now, I don't know the total outcome. I don't know if how much damage was done to his lungs. I do know that he ruptured a lung, that he perforated. That was from uh, finding out from the EMS personnel that was there. But once again, we should never ever hold our breath when breathing compressed gas at more than 1.0 atmospheres. And we need to make sure that we're properly treating people when we're out there in the field. Now, whether or not anybody that was on staff that day was properly trained in emergency oxygen, you can actually be trained in emergency oxygen whether they are or not. Take the SSI React Right class, learn basic first aid for scuba divers, basic AED administration and CPR and oxygen uh, administration as well, and you can help a fellow diver in need. This diver s seriously needed oxygen and he wasn't getting it when he needed it. And like I said, there was about a, a total of an hour gap there from the time the incident occurred to the time EMS got him. 
Um, so he severely needed oxygen and he, of course he wasn't getting it. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it educational. Um, if you got any questions, please drop me a comment down below and I'll try to answer those questions the best I can. I hope this video didn't freak you out, but I, I do hope that it scared you a little bit. I hope you understand the importance of understanding Boyle's Law and how pressure and volume work, especially for scuba divers and even free divers. Uh, one thing that a lot of people don't understand is that even free divers can get decompression sickness and in this case they can even rupture a lung as well. But guys I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it as well. As always make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always guys we appreciate your business.